This year has been a desperate year for beekeeping. The bees have been struggling to get enough food into the hive to feed their youngsters. So this morning I want to really have a look at the hive, see what's going on and try and read what state they're in because I haven't had a lot of opportunities. I'm going to use some of this dead wood which is, uh, this actually I think is from the storm in 87. It's easy to light and it produces a burn and you can see the glow like that and it's, it's called, it doesn't burn at a high heat and it gives off a gentle smoke which is better for the bees. The reason you smoke the bees with this is so that they think there's a fire and bees normally live in woods in bowls, in holes of trees, woodpecker holes and the like of that. And when they get the sense of fire in a forest, their immediate reaction is, we've got a crisis, and they, once they smell smoke, will start filling up their stomachs with honey in case they have to leave the hive and so they've got stores. So their reaction, and when a bee has got a stomach full of honey, its body can't bend round so effectively and give me such a sting. So it's um, to my advantage to have that if they're being aggressive. But it's the perfect um, way of, of controlling bees. Right, now it's time for me to get dressed. And this is my bee suit. And my bee suit gives me protection. It's my armor plating, if you like. And it's not because I'm frightened of being stung but it gives me protection and even though I don't get a reaction from a bee sting, which a lot of people do because I've kept bees for many years, I still don't like the pain of being stung. It's a bit like having an injection. And in the bee sting, the liquid that is injected into my skin is formic acid and it's the same as the ants and so that's the old adage bees is blue bags and wasps is vinegar in other words if you get stung with a wasp you put vinegar on it because it is an antidote to the alkaline of the sting and a bee has formic acid so you put an alkali with it and I've got a uniform spare here should we need it I've got my equipment, I've got my gloves, so I'm ready to go. I've always been interested in natural history and particularly bees and ants because they're the social insects of the world. It's been particularly bad because it's not just the weather, it's also to do with pollution in the atmosphere, pollution in the agriculture world with herbicides and pesticides, and bees, like us, believe it or not, can suffer from stress. If one's stressed, one isn't in such good health. And then on top of all that, we've had this new parasite called the Varroa, which has come from the Far East, and it has caused devastation to all the uh, bees in this world. Sometimes they die, and all of these things have contributed towards this new problem which is called colony collapse disorder or disease and it really has been a mega problem. When I started in the early 80s you never had a problem, now you have to be very cautious about them and help them as much as you can. This is the way up to the bees in the wall garden up there but I just wanted to point out these trees here, they're all recently planted apple trees by the head gardener Robert Mitchell. He's such a sympathetic man to the insect world and all these apple trees will come into bloom shortly. I've got a great source of pollen and nectar for the bees and you've got pear trees along the walls there, you've got all the other wooded trees. It's a perfect location for bees and their natural environment is in a wood and surrounding the garden we've got a lot of trees. And then, not that the bees like it, but at the far end there's a fig tree which produces wonderful figs, but the bees aren't interested in them. So maybe, as a beekeeper, I'm not interested in them either. But I do like eating them. Some people do get this dangerous reaction called an anaphylactic reaction to bees and that is the one that needs adrenaline injection immediately and I keep adrenaline in a, in a syringe that can be administered if, if someone had a reaction.
This is a floorboard that I keep. I look at it for Varroa and hopefully I won't see any because these hives have been treated through the winter and there's none. The yellow is all pollen here and then you see one or two ants having a nice time. This brown stuff is called propolis which is a bee glue and in fact what they do is they collect this from the buds of the horse chestnut and other um, trees with stickiness and they bring it into the hive and it's their form of um, ex ventilation, or at least excluding drafts and breezes. They, they use it to block up hives and block up between the frames, and you'll see it when we look inside. And the little white bits, there's a little bit of granulated sugar, and here is a little the amount of wax, which is the bees exude from their body to make the wax frame. Right, I'll put that back. It's a nice sunny day and they're feeling relaxed. But you'll watch some of them are going in and you'll see a little two yellow spots on their back legs. And those are the, that's the pollen they're taking and carrying it in on what's called their pollen sacs. And you can see all their activities on the left-hand side. So I know when I open the hive that most of the activity will be on the left-hand side of that hive. There are two insects that actually live as a colony, the honeybee and the ant. All other insects, the, the bumblebees, the hoverflies, all, they all die down to a single queen who hibernates and then comes in, out, emerges in spring and lays eggs. The honeybee and the ant are social animal, or insta, animals, or insects, social insects, and they live as a colony through the winter and they spend their time collecting honey during the summer so they can get through the winter. In a true communist world, in their social society, there isn't anyone who's better than the other. They all play an important part. There's a wonderful book written by Meiterlink in um, about eight, 1906, talking about the life of the honeybee and how we should all model our life on Meiterlink because it was the true communist state where one lived for the common good and there was never any preference shown to anyone. But doesn't quite work that way. <laughs>
and here you've got the sealed larva and you can see white ones at the bottom there and there's pollen on the bee. Where it's brown it's capped and then you've got the white larva which are the young bees. The top will cover across so the egg is laid after three days it hatches into a larva like this. It's fed and it grows, it's fed with pollen and with nectar or honey and then after nine days it's sealed and then on 21 days it comes out as a working bee. These larger cells are going to make drone cells. This is the worker bee and that is the drone. The drone is the male that is needed for fertilizing the queen when she swarms. You see eggs, you know that there's a queen. There's the queen, look. She is here, see her here with a white spot on? Yeah. The queen is the essential part of the hive. No queen, the bees will die. In the past, I would have taken a queen, this queen, or the queen from this colony, which is weak, and united the two. But I can't do that today because if this has got a disease that I can't see, can only be diagnosed with a microscope, then I lose both colonies. So now what I'll do is I'll work at trying to get this colony to build up so it'll bring in honey for the summer. But I won't get what's called the spring crop, which is the honey that comes from the fruit trees, the apple trees, pear trees, peach trees, nectarines, cherries, and, some, and the sycamore, which is a very good tree for honey at this time of the year. And then when the chestnut flower comes out, that'll be good. So here endeth that lesson. Now I'm going to cover them up again. But what I'm going to do, I think, is I'm going to take away this sugar syrup, because, uh, this nectar, because it's not doing them any good at all. They were not doing it, they don't need it anymore. And it's gone fairly solid, so they'd have trouble getting rid of that. So I will take that away from them. I'll, I'll dissolve that. Look, there's one having a feed right down at the bottom there. Let's see if we can jizz him up and get him out. There he is, and see how they've been burrowing. But this is now too dry for them to be able to get it. And the only way they could use this is they'll go out into the um, gardens, find a pond or something with warm water, and they'll bring it back, put it on there, and make a solution, and then put that into the hive. But I'll take this away. It's not really helpful to them at the moment.